Devil monkeys are a very small primate-like cryptid. They were initially sighted in the mid-1930s around the Appalachian Mountains, but since that time they've been spotted as far west as Arizona and as far north as Alaska. Devil monkeys are very aggressive and show little or no fear of humans. In fact, many people believe they are just like baboons, where staring directly into their eyes is considered a challenge. It's a statement that you are a healthy individual and you are looking for a fight. They're amazingly agile. They've been known to jump down from 50 feet in the trees and then in a single bound leap 20 feet forward. They're very quick, four to five times quicker than a human, possibly up to eight times stronger than a human, giving them the ability to move things that weigh nearly a ton. It's thought that they reach a maximum of five feet. Witnesses spotting something taller than five feet are usually confusing devil monkeys with hairy hominids or some other unknown cryptid. They are thought to be very territorial. Building or encroaching upon their land is considered a direct threat. They have no fear of human habitation. It is thought that it's possible that the devil monkey is related to an extinct genus of primates called Theropithecus oswaldi. They were estimated to be two to three times as heavy as a modern baboon. They were incredibly powerful and fast and would be a serious threat even to a modern day lion, especially in packs. Despite depictions to the contrary, devil monkeys are not thought to have glowing eyes. Glowing eyes are associated with other cryptids that are very similar in appearance. They have three sharp claws, which are able to penetrate very deep into their victims. The attacks attributed to devil monkeys on livestock and pets have been incredibly brutal. The first reported encounter in 1934 described a mysterious beast that could leap across fields with lightning speed near Pittsburgh, Tennessee. The first officially recognized devil monkey sighting occurred in 1959, while a couple by the name of Boyd were driving through the mountains near their home in Saltville, Virginia. According to their account, an ape-like beast attacked their car, leaving three scratch marks along the side of the vehicle. The Boyd's daughter, Pauline, described the terrifying attacker. It had light, taffy-colored hair with a white blaze down its neck and underbelly. It stood on two large, well-muscled back legs and had shorter front legs or arms. Apparently, another incident occurred just days later in the same region. Boyd is quoted as saying several days after his accident, two nurses from the Saltville area were driving home from work one morning. They were attacked by an unknown creature that ripped the convertible top from their car. The nurses were able to escape unharmed. In 1979, there were several reported encounters with the devil monkey near the rural depths of Georgia. One female eyewitness described it as the ugliest looking thing I've ever seen. It had a tail like a beaver's, but it's bushy. She also claimed it bore a face like a dog. The following audio clip is reportedly the sounds of a devil monkey. It was captured at night in Adams County, Ohio, at the base of the Appalachian Mountains, deep in the woods. The following two accounts were sampled from the Monsters and Mysteries show. They detail very aggressive attacks by devil monkeys. According to scientists, the last North American primates living in the wild died out some 30 million years ago. Of course, every once in a while there's a story about a monkey on the loose and thriving. There's no question that an animal as intelligent and resourceful as a primate can survive here. Imagine if those capacities mutated into something utterly mean. In the 1970s, Marva and Wayman Morgan moved to rural Kentucky to give their four young children a life in the country. They loved the serenity they felt from the woods close by. As they discover, those woods were hiding something monstrous. My aunt and uncle owned this property. My uncle... He had chickens, and they had left uh, for a night and came back the next day, and all the chickens were dead. They didn't pay much attention to the family tale. But after they moved in, things began to happen. One night alongside her Kentucky home, 
just as she was closing the windows to a sudden awful smell. I knew this creature was not human. I knew that it was something that I had never seen before, and I didn't know what it was going to do. Eyeball to eyeball with the devil monkey. It scared me so bad. And I screamed and run, and all the kids screamed and run and followed me into the bathroom. Generations of the Boyd family have lived in the same small Virginian town. My father worked on the railroad for 13, almost 14 years as a fireman shoveling coal. My mom was a cheerful, happy-go-lucky person. The oldest of five children, Scott Boyd enjoyed his childhood in the foothills of the Appalachians. You were outside, you were in the woods, you were all over the place. Nobody gave it a second thought. It had all started hours earlier during the night when Scott's parents, Jim and Polly Boyd, were driving on a dark mountain road. What is that? Out of nowhere. Ah! Oh a crazed monkey monster leaped towards the car. It had its face pressed right up in the window with its lips curled back from its teeth and a snarl. Dad said you could hear it raking the side of the car, scratching and, and scrambling at the side of the car. And he said that it was running upright, pacing the car, reaching at the back of the car, grabbing at the back of the car. They gunned it down the road, worried the creature might be following. My mom and dad came straight on home. I can remember my mom being real quiet and real pale. They were scratches all the way into the middle, through the paint, from the passenger side window, all the way down the side of the car and going off the back end. They were in rows of three. Never seen anything like it before or since. My dad seemed like he was almost embarrassed. You could see the, the, the fright on his face when he would talk about it. And that literally scared the, me to death, really. It, it, it bothered me for years after that. In closing, it has been suggested that over the years, baboons had escaped either from circus trains or from private owners and they've run free and found a way to reproduce. And in some cases, because of the change in the environment, since they're normally accustomed to an African subcontinent, they've grown to some sort of strange mutated form.